everyone, Meg here from I Teach Stamping and today's objective is to make a beautiful birthday card in under five minutes. That's the goal. So the only thing I have done ahead of time is cut my cardstock. So let's kind of go over those measurements real quick. I'm gonna use a Whisper White base that I cut to four and a quarter by 11 inches and I scored it at five and a half. Then I have two pieces of white that are both gonna be four inches by five and a quarter inches. I have a piece of Berry Burst that's gonna be three and a half by three and a half. Same with some adhesive sheets cut to the exact same measurement. I have a one inch wide strip of Berry Burst and I need it to be a thinnish size of four inches. Keeping it long for a reason, I'll show you when we get there. And then I have a three quarter inch strip of Whisper White. Again, it's gonna be finished at four inches, but I cut it a little bit longer on purpose. Great time, great way to use up any of the little scraps you have. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is go ahead and do my big shot work, because I like to do anything that takes up a lot of real estate on my countertop first and get it out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove my backing from my adhesive sheet. And I'm gonna stick this together. It doesn't have to be perfect, like don't worry about lining it all up, it just needs to be enough. Then we're gonna bring in the Big Shot. I'm gonna be using the Happy Birthday Thinlet. This one comes from Stampin' Up. I love this one. I get so much use out of it. I've probably, well, I can't even tell you how many cards I've made with it. All right, so here we have the Big Shot. I am gonna use the magnetic platform with it. So I'll move this in. Magnetic platform, cutting plate. We're good there. Now I'm gonna try to leave myself some areas, and I'll explain why as I'm cutting, but let's go ahead and cut. The reason why is I'm gonna keep that background, that negative space in my scrap bin with my Berry Burst scraps, because there's little flowers and little other things that I might wanna die cut out, little candles, stuff like that, and so I'll already have the adhesive on it, why throw it away? All right, so now we're gonna check and make sure we got a good die cut everywhere. It looks like we're good to go. This is when I always like to ooh, spend an extra second and make sure. Okay, looks like we're good there. Then we're gonna go ahead and switch over to our regular platform. And it is time to do our dry embossing. I'm gonna use the basket weave embossing folder from Stampin' Up. And I want one of my four by five and a quarter inch pieces of white and then my little strip. I'm gonna use a spritzer that I've already filled with rubbing alcohol. This is a dynamic folder, but I'm also using Whisper White cardstock. And Whisper White is thinner than other cardstocks on the market. It also has a smooth finish to it. So by spraying it with rubbing alcohol, it's gonna help break up the fibers of the, the cardstock a little bit better when you're using one of these thick impression folders. Um, thought I could do them both at the same time, but no. And then we ca you can also use water. I just don't prefer, oh, you only need one plate. I'm sitting here talking and stuff, paying attention to what I'm doing. I'm like, what's going on? Um, you can use water. I just don't like to use water on any of my projects. I just don't, because then sometimes ink will get to it and smear, and then you're sad and you cry, and that's just not good for anybody. Look at that fabulous texture. And I like this side of it too. Like have fun with both sides. This is a beautiful new folder. Because I messed up, this one dried a bit. And that's the other advantage of using rubbing alcohol is it is fast drying. So I'm gonna take this and line it up. Just going across the middle there. I'm going hinge first into the machine. Because it's a dynamic folder, we only need one cutting plate. Okay. We have this right here. We're ready to move Big Shot out of the way. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and work with our die and get all the little pieces out of it. See how we did. Oh, my backing's already coming off. We don't want that just yet. Just yet. That little piece, I think we just have one more and we're ready. Actually, you know what, let me show you a trick. I should have done this when I had the big shot out, but let me go ahead and show you a trick. I'm gonna need my paper piercer. 
We might go a little bit more in five minutes, but I hope you don't mind since it's a really good trip. With these dies that have all these little dots, and the dots will transfer onto your cardstock, but the dots are there so you can take your paper piercer and get the cardstock out of the die without having to go to the back and jam it and, well, jam it and get it all messed up. So with those little dots, let me bring the Big Shop back in. Get my die out of the way, there we go. Um, I'm gonna use my cut plate on the bottom I'm just going to lay this on top and then I'm going to use a plate. This is my top plate. I don't cut into this plate. And so, oh, I do need the, the thin die adapter because there's nothing in there with it, right? There's no die. There's no embossing paper. We need something. So just by running it through there, it'll take out some of the dots. It's not going to make it completely flat again, but it's going to do well here actually. On this one, it did remarkably well. I can't even see a single dot. We'll take it. Okay, so just a quick little tip if those dots irritate you the way that they irritate me. All right, so let's, let's build. We are ready to build. I'm gonna take one of the pieces of white cardstock. I'm gonna use my grid paper, and I want this one inch strip half an inch up from the bottom. So I'm gonna go past the edges, just a little bit on one side. But that way I'm able to get a nice straight line going across the bottom. And then I'm going to take some adhesive. And we're going to attach this white in the middle. So this is going to be the inside of our card. Now I'll take my scissors and trim off the excess. And this way I have a nice flush edge. Because sometimes, you know, when you cut cardstock, you may cut everything to four inches, but then one piece is just a little bit shy. And that drives me nuts. And that's an easy way to fix that. Let's go ahead and bring in our card base. We're going to take this and just plop it down on the inside. Isn't that a beautiful way to bring our very versed color that's going to be on the front of the card also to the inside of the card. I love the way this looks. All right, now we're ready to do the front piece, so we're ready to tackle our ribbon. I'm going to bring in our dry embossed piece and my ribbon scissors, and we're going to go just a little about half an inch on each side. This is a tip I recently shared in the Stamping Family. They all loved it. So. I'm going to take my ribbon, it's folded in half, and I'm going to pick up a glue dot. Then I'm, just, I'm, going to, I'm going to take this and I'm going to smush it together. So all I did was just kind of gather it, and yes, I'll be the first to admit, it looks like heck at first. Then I'm going to take a glue dot on each end. I'm going to really focus on putting that knot into the middle and pressing it down. And then I'm going to take my tails and wrap it around. Ha! Huh, I think I left my glue dot on the roll. Yes, I did. It works so much better if you actually pick it up. Just saying. Okay. Now we're going to take this and we're going to put it onto the front of our card. I pick up our happy birthday and this is going to stick so much easier than any other way with these little intricate cut dies. Because all the adhesive is on the back of our berry burst. We just made it into one giant sticker and then we die cut it. So one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to working with ribbon strips and attaching a bow is when you have your ribbon and it's wider than the knot on your bow and it shows. So by having that glue dot there to gather it, it looks like we actually tied the bow onto our card. And there we have, let's kind of move all the mess out of the way and take a look at our finished card. 
here we have it. We have that fabulous texture on there. We have our cute little happy birthday that's die cut, our stunning coordinating ribbon that has some fun silver trim, and then we coordinated the inside with the outside of the card, which is something most people, in fact, someone just told me the other day, she said, I've been paper crafting for over 20 years and I've never done anything with the inside of the card. She said, but you always make it look so easy, so why not? So I hope you enjoyed today's card and I hope that you learned something. I think we did go past the five minutes. I was trying not to, but I wanted to share some extra tips with you and that kind of. If you have any questions about this video, leave them in the comments below. I love reading your comments. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, take two seconds and do that. Again, I'm Meg from iTeach Stamping and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.